Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS on the one. This is part three of how to build a concrete block basement for beginners. In this video, I will show you how to add bond beams to a concrete block wall. Bond beams are used in masonry construction to provide horizontal reinforcement. This is usually achieved by filling bond beam blocks with grout and rebar reinforcement, which integrates with the vertical rebar reinforcement in a reinforced block wall. Bond beams should be used approximately every four foot on a reinforced block wall with a top course of blocks usually ending with a bond beam. Here's a look at my block basement. It consists of 11 courses and it measures just over seven feet high. So this would only require two bond beams, one in the middle and one on the top as shown here highlighted in red. But for my block basement, I actually have three bond beams. The first bond beam is used to run my electrical inside of, which is explained in great detail in part two of building a concrete block basement. The second bond beam is placed in the middle of the remaining eight courses. And the third bond beam is my top course of blocks. All three of these bond beams add a significant amount of horizontal reinforcement that ties in with my vertical reinforcement, which is highlighted here in green. The vertical reinforcement consists of half inch rebar that starts at the footer and goes all the way to the top course and is spaced every two foot on my block wall. To make the bond beams, there's various styles of bond beam blocks you can purchase, or you can just make your own as I will demonstrate right here. So these are just standard blocks and I'm using a four inch angle grinder with a concrete blade to make cuts on the inside of the block. Then I use a masonry hammer to knock out the areas on the inside of the block that I just cut to create a bond beam block that can hold rebar inside of it. And here's an example of how to make a corner bond beam block. So right here, what I'm using is a standard corner block. And what I'm trying to do is make a pathway for rebar to be able to go around the corner of this block. So again, I'm using my angle grinder with a concrete blade to make my cuts. And what I did here is I cut a two inch by four inch hole on the side of the block, then knocked it out with my hammer. Then with the grinder pointed down, I clean up the cut that I just made. Then on the front of the block right here, I cut another hole that's approximately the same size. Then I clean that out again with my grinder. And for the last step, I cut another hole on the center of the block right here. Then knock it out with my hammer and clean it up. So this corner block is now ready for rebar. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in position so we can get a closer look at how this is gonna work. This corner block will tie in with the vertical rebar. And it also has a pathway now for the horizontal rebar to run through it. To integrate the horizontal and vertical rebar together, the cells need to be filled with grout. Every block cell located on the bond beam course should be filled with grout. But for all the blocks located underneath the bond beam course, only the cells that contain vertical rebar need to be filled with grout. For the rest of the block cells, they can be covered with a wire mesh to avoid filling the block cells. But for my concrete block basement, I filled every block cell because I wanted a solid block wall. So wire mesh was not used on my concrete block walls. Now I would like to share with you a little bit of the building process for the middle and top bond beams. Here's a look at the middle bond beam course. And at this point, we're pretty close to being halfway done. So I got a couple corner blocks there in place and I got two stretches I still have to get done there, the back and the side. And right here, we're finishing up one of the sides. So at this point, there's no vertical rebar that's visible. That's because I have to add some vertical rebar extensions, but I'm gonna wait till I get a couple courses higher before I add those extensions. So this opening that I'm working right next to will be for one of my windows. And here's another window opening on the opposite side. And now we're just about done with this block course. We're just finishing up the joints. So as you can see with this course of bond beam blocks, I have a pathway for my rebar to run inside this and go around the corners from one window opening to the next window opening. Now it's time to place my rebar inside the bond beam blocks. So right here, I'm placing some 20 foot sticks of half inch rebar inside the blocks that I've bent to go around the corners. The rebar runs from one window opening to the next window opening all the way around the four block walls. And I use two sticks of rebar to give it more strength. Then I overlap the rebar by at least two feet 
to make it from one point to another. Here's a closer look at the rebar. Here's the corner. And then here's where it starts at the window opening. And here's a look at it after getting all the rebar in place for this middle bond beam course. Now at this point, I could add my vertical rebar extensions, then fill my cells with grout, but I will wait until I get a little bit higher on my block wall before I fill the cells. Now let's move on to the top bond beam course of blocks, and this would be the 11th course. At this stage, I'm working on the back block wall that's flush with my existing exterior wall on my home, which will eventually be tore down. On this section of the block wall, I've already filled the cells with grout up to the 10th course because I have a very limited amount of room to access the cells of the 11th course of blocks, which will have to be filled with just a trowel. And one more thing I'd like to mention with this section of blocks, I did leave out two blocks and that's so I have a spot to run my heater ducting through. Now it's time to continue on with the rest of this course and I'm going to fast forward just a little bit here to the last block on this course. And this happens to be a half block and it's right at the window opening. So I'm placing the block in the bed and mortar, then I'm checking to make sure it's level and even with the string line, then cut the mortar away. And now I'm finally done with laying block on my block basement, but I still have a lot more work to do such as filling the block cells. So my basement has four window openings, two that are larger, measuring at 40 inches wide by 56 inches tall, and two that are smaller, measuring at 16 inches by 16 inches. For my window headers, I ended up using floor eye joists and modified rim boards to make my headers, but optionally, you could use bond beams for the window headers, but the horizontal rebar in these block headers would have to be tripled up and some angle iron could help strengthen the header as well. And you will also need to build temporary supports to build this block header across the window opening. Now it's time to fill the block cells with grout and I have already added my vertical rebar extensions that are placed every two foot with the top of them ending flush with the horizontal rebar along with some small bends at the end of the rebar extensions. To fill my block cells, I ordered a batch of grout that was delivered with a concrete truck, then used a slide to help guide the grout into the holes. And for the areas that could not be reached with the truck, I used a wheelbarrow along with a five gallon bucket. To figure out the amount of grout needed to fill the block cells, I used a concrete block fill calculator, which can be found online easily with just a simple Google search. For my block walls that are eight inches thick, one yard of grout will fill approximately 100 blocks. So right here, I'm finishing the grout towards flush with the top of the blocks. Then I install anchors every two foot. And now I'm going to keep doing the same thing and we'll go ahead and fast forward here a little bit while I'm filling the cells with grout. And now let's go ahead and take a closer look at setting one of the anchor bolts. This is a half inch concrete anchor bolt that's galvanized and it's compatible with all types of treated lumber. To set the anchor bolts, I have to do it while the grout is somewhat fresh. That way I can set it inside the grout. And what I usually do is just kind of wiggle it down to where just the threads are exposed above the top of the grout. And this doesn't have to be set perfectly, but it should be somewhat consistent with the other concrete anchor bolts. After getting my anchor bolt into position, I can grab my trowel and finish the edges where I just placed the anchor. Then, after waiting 24 hours for the grout to dry, I can go ahead and install my sill plates to begin the lumber framing. So that's it for part three, the bond beams. And here's a quick preview of some of my upcoming videos for building a block basement, where I will be discussing the sill plate, floor eye joists, windows, and more. If you like this video, if you could hit that like button and have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This is CLS All in One. If you want to hear more from me, please like and subscribe. And to see more of my videos, just click any of these categories to see more.